Dear class, uh, this week we're going to talk about toxicology. Toxicology seeks to characterize the potentially adverse effect of foreign chemicals and their dose response relationships to protect public health. Toxicology is defined as the study of the adverse effect of chemicals on living organisms. The term toxicology is defined as the inherent capacity of chemical to cause injury. Thus, all chemicals, including drugs, have some degree of toxicity. This was first documented by physician Paracelsus, 1493 to 1541, who stated, "All substances are poisons. There is none which is not a poison. The right dose differentiates a poison from a remedy." The adverse effects of therapeutic drug have been discussed in pre previous chapter as drug have been presented and therefore will not be dis uh, considered here. Instead, example of non-drug chemical that are of public health concern along with some basic concept in toxicology are presented. Toxic chemical are the from the environment may contact the skin and or be absorbed after ingestion or inhalation. These exogenous chemicals are distributed to various organs where they may be metabolized to products that may be more or less toxic than the original parent chemical. The parent compound or uh, its metabolized interact with target macromolecule resulting in a toxic effect. Any tissue or organ within the body can potentially be affected by a chemical toxin, and indeed, most chemicals adversely affect more than one tissue. However, the lung portal of entry for gases, vapors, and particles that can be inhaled, liver portal of entry of ingested chemical, and tissue with a high blood flow such as brain, kidney, and particularly uh, vulnerable to toxic uh, action of chemicals. In addition, the heart is sensitive to any toxin-induced disruption in ionic gradients. Many chemicals produce the toxic effect by interfering with the function of a specific biochemical pathway and or affect the function of macromolecule within a tissue. For example, rodenticide warfarin inhibits the vitamin K dependent on uh, post-translation modification of certain clotting factors by the liver. Selective toxic action of chemicals are usually apparent only after the chemical has been absorbed and distributed within the body. In contrast to non-selective action which generally occur at the site uh, exposure. Many compounds have toxic action that will quickly lead to symptom following exposure. For example, inhibition of acetylcholine esterase by organal uh, phosphate insecticides such as malathion will rapidly lead to symptom of excess acetylcholine at the synapses and neuromuscular uh, junction. However, many chemicals exert effect that have latency period of as long as several decades. For example, the carcinogen asbestos can lead to mesothelioma and pathology of lung even 15 to 30 years after exposure. Halogenated hydrocarbons are usually volatile and exposure can be through inhalation and ingestion. They are liquid, they are lipid soluble can pass through the blood brain barrier. Most will depress the central nervous system when acute exposure are high. Individuals can be exposed to carbon tetrachloride through consumption of contaminated drinking water. Although transient low-level inhalation of carbon tetrachloride can produce irritation of the eye and respiratory system, high level whether inhaled or ingested can produce nausea, vomiting, stupor, convulsion, coma, and death from CNS depression. The adverse effects associated with chlor chloroform exposure are similar to those with carbon tetrachloride. Exposure can occur through ingestion or inhalation and toxic dose will result in nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headaches, and stupor. Chloroform can also sensitize the heart to catecholamine induced arrhythmia. Chloroform is hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic due to its metabolic activation. As with halogenated hydrocarbons, aromatic hydrocarbons tend to be volatile and Exposure can occur through inhalation and ingestion. Large 
acute exposure can cause CNS depression and lead to cardiac arrhythmia through sensitization of heart cell to catecholamines. However, other aspects of their toxicological profile can differ significantly from that of halogenated hydrocarbon. Approximately half of the national exposure to benzene occur through tobacco smoke. Chronic benzene exposure in humans produce similar poetic toxicity, of which the more serious are acranulocytosis and leukemia, particularly acute myelogenous leukemia. Non-occupational exposure to benzene can occur as a result of combustion of fossil fuel, including automobile gasoline, and by consumption of contaminated water. Toluene Automobile emissions are the principal source of exposure in ambient air, whereas indoor exposure occurs from the use of household products containing toluene like degreaser, certain paints and primers, and furniture polish. Acute and chronic exposure to toluene can produce CNS depression with symptoms including drowsiness, ataxia, trauma, impaired speech, hearing, and vision. Chronic exposure may also produce damage to liver and kidney. Deaths have occurred at high level exposure. These primary alcohol are themselves relatively non-toxic and cause mainly CNS sedation. However, methanol, ethylene glycol are oxidized to toxic products. Formic acid in the case of methanol and glycolic and Glyosilic and oxalic acid in the case of ethylene glycol. Femapizole inhibit this oxidative pathway, preventing the formation of toxic metabolites and allow the parent alcohol to be excreted by the kidney. Coma, seizure, hypopnea. Hyper, and hypotension all suggest that a substantial portion of parent alcohol has been metabolized to toxic acids. Pesticides are a large class of chemical designed to kill pests and organisms that society considers to be unhealthy, harmful, a nuisance, or destructive. Although their use is often controversial, uh, they have had a significant impact on public health through the reduction of insect-borne diseases such as yellow fever and malaria, and they have increased crop yields in agriculture. A large variety of different classes of pesticides are currently used throughout the world. Carbamate insecticides are used in the United States, whereas both carbamate and organophosphate insecticides are used worldwide. They exert their toxicity through inhibition of acetylcholine esterase with subsequent accumulation of excess acetylcholine. Rotinone is used primarily as an insecticide and is applied to a wide variety of crops. It acts by inhibiting the oxidation of reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Symptoms of poison include nausea and vomiting with convulsion and death at very high dose. The heavy metal that are currently of most concern from a public health perspective are lead, mercury, and cadmium. They are exert their toxic effect by binding certain functional groups on critical macromolecules within the body thereby inactivating the function of those macromolecules. These functional groups include hydroxy group, carboxylic acid group, sulfhydryl groups, and amino groups. Heavy metal intoxication can be treated by drug term chelators, uh, which form complexes with the metal and prevent their binding to the endogenous macromolecules. Acute exposure to high level of of heavy metal are rare in the United States and are usually confined to occupational exposure. Such high exposure often result in non-selective corrosive effect. Of much greater public health concern are more widespread chronic exposure to low level of these toxic elements. Lead is ubiquitous in the environment with sources of exposure include old pain, drinking water, industrial pollution, food, and contaminated dust. However, with elimination of tetraethyl lead in gasoline during the mid-1980s in the United States, environmental exposure to organic lead has been reduced, and most chronic exposure to lead occur with inorganic lead salt, such as those in paint used in housing constructed prior to 1978, 
Age-dependent differences in absorption of ingested lead are known to occur. Adults absorb about 10% of ingested dose, whereas children absorb about 40%. In organic form, lead are initially distributed to the soft tissue and more slowly redistribute to bone, teeth, and hair. Potential exposure to mercury can a significant health concern because various forms of mercury are released into a human environment by industry, by natural release from the ocean, and through burning of fossil fuel. Human exposure to three different forms of mercury can occur. Elemental mercury, toxic exposure to elemental mercury are usually occupational, in which the vapor are inhaled. In organic uh, mercury, so exposure in organic mercury uh, salt, such as mercury chloride that led to adverse health effects are usually occupational in nature. Organic mercury, any form of mercury that contains at least one covalent bond to carbon atom is considered to be organic mercury. Organic mercury tend to be more lipid soluble than inorganic salt as well as uh, much less corrosive, therefore significant absorption result after ingestion which occur primarily uh, from the consumption of food, particularly uh, fish contaminated with methyl mercury. Chemical can be inhaled as gases, solid or aerosol. Some chemicals that make their way to alveoli can be rapidly absorbed and distributed to other tissue. Other particulate can become lodged in alveoli and exert serious local toxicity without being absorbed into a bloodstream. Carbon monoxide is a gas that is colorless, odorless, and tasteless, making it impossible for an individual to detect without a carbon monoxide detector. Cyanide, once absorbed into the body, cyanide quickly binds to many metalloenzymes, thereby rendering them inactive. Its principal toxicity occurs as a result of inactivation of enzyme cytochrome oxidase, leading to inhibition of cellular respiration. Workers in mine, foundries, construction site, and stone cutter are at particular risk of silicosis, perhaps the oldest known occupational disease. Silicosis is a progressive lung disease that uh, results in fibrosis and often emphysema. Silicosis is currently incurable and the prognosis is often poor. However, with lower exposure, silicosis does not always end in death or debilitation. The greatest public health threat from asbestos is pulmonary in nature as a result of inhalation of the fiber, some of which stay permanently in lung alveoli. The three diseases most commonly associated with asbestos exposure are as asbestosis, mesothelioma, and lung cancer. Symptoms of these diseases may not be apparent for up to 15 to 30 years following exposure of asbestos. So a chemical antidote for poisoning have been developed for a number of chemical and class of intoxicants. The following example of strategy that form the basis for the use of specific chemical antidote with an example of how each can be applied. Pharmacologic antagonism of uh, toxic action. Artovine is a muscarinic receptor antagonist that is used as antidote for intoxication uh, by acetylcholine esterase. It works by blocking access of excess acetylcholine to muscarinic receptor. Removal of intoxicant mediated oxidative stress. Acetaminophen at high doses will produce liver necrosis as a result of its metabolic activation by cytochrome P450. Administration of N acetylcysteine serves as a substitute for glutathione by removing reactive metabolite produced from acetaminophen. To be effective, an acetylacetine and acetylcysteine must be given as early as possible within 8 to 10 hours of ingestion of acetaminophen. Reduce metallic inactivation. The toxicity of methanol is thought to be mediated by formic acid, which is produced by metabolism of methanol by alcohol dehydrogenase. Formepizole is an antidote to methanol because it inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase. By chelation, like succinamide is a derivative of 
dimer couple that is effective upon all administration. Succimol is currently approved for the treatment of lead intoxication but may be effective in chelation of other metals as well. Another possible option is by induced vomiting. So Epicac syrup has both central and peripheral action, intense irritation of mucosal layer of intestinal wall leading uh, to uh, a of vomiting.